Nemo, thank you so much. Uh, it, you are just back from another end to FGM trip. You and I have had a conversation about some of the highlights. I want to try to talk about those highlights so that we can hit them all and keep them short. One of the most powerful things I heard you say was a girl whose mother had had her circumcised and she had never forgiven her. Tell us about that. Uh, when we started the the training uh, end FGM, we always deal with the spiritual atmosphere. So we want to take care of first of the heart and the mind because that is where the strongest battle is. And if we don't deal with the mind and the heart, there's nothing really we are doing even if we kept talking. So we deal with that to lay a foundation of everything else that we shall talk about. So we talked about forgiveness and reconciliation and we pointed them out to bring their burdens to the altar because forgiveness is important even for God to bless you and even for you to travel light. And so at that moment, one girl came in front and said, I've never forgiven my mother because of what happened to me because of FGM and all that. And then we had two more women come at the front. They also had the same issues that we have done this to our daughters and we need to ask God to forgive us for what we did. Mm. So it was a beautiful moment of just forgiving each other and reconciliation and all that. Amen. So we thank God for that because we could see it firsthand. Yeah, and thank you to all you people out there who are fasting on Nemo's behalf. I'm sure you had your own team fasting, but uh, it is a spiritual battle out there. Uh, talk about the men. You, you did the three-day meeting, got the community together, and talk about men, though. What are, what's new happening among men, among the Messiah, about discipling others? Uh, what is happening about the men? Pastor Moses has taken the clarion call to have discipleship and multiplication among the men. In his church, when he started, he only had 25 men. As the end, at the end of last year, he had already multiplied the number and they are actually now about 62 men. So they have taken it up a notch higher that each man should disciple other two men. And by the end of the year, they should bring close to 100 men back to church. So what they are doing is going for evangelism to their homes instead of asking them to come to church. So they are reaching them at their point because... It has been difficult because of culture and traditions and it's a patriarchal society. So going against the norm, going against the grain to do something different that has not been done before. And we are seeing the fruits and we are seeing that he's also challenging the pastors um, in the Maasai area to also do the same, to grow the number of men in their churches by adopting the same method that he's doing. And for the discipleship and multiplication is actually what you have been teaching when you learn something teach it to somebody else so that you don't even forget so when you keep doing that the message sticks with you yeah and i think that's second timothy 2 2 paul talked about it jesus talked about it i think he told us to go make disciples because that's when we learn <laughs> mm -hmm. and so okay uh, now um you showed the the video of the six-year-old little girl being circumcised, you told me there are so many different reactions to it. Talk a little bit about those reactions. The reactions come differently. Some walk out. They can't bear to watch it till the end. The ones who stay, some you'll see them covering their faces. Others you will see as if they have a smile on their face. It's just they are caught dead in the middle of it. They don't know even how to react because of the traumas and the pain that they have gone through. And we have seen also on Facebook of the Maasai girls who have traveled the world and explored different parts of the country. They are actually asking how they can have reconstructive surgery because of what happened to them as grown as they are because it's affecting their self-esteem and all that. So it is an issue that has become uh, a thorn in the flesh, so to speak, because mm -hmm. of culture and tradition. So yeah. I assume at the end of these three days, the men said no more FGM. Is that correct? Was this a successful yes. trip? It was a successful trip that even the pastor is still giving feedback, even when we have come back home, that they have never seen somebody who has talked to them and made them understand why they do what they do and to just see it from a biblical perspective because no woman was ever circumcised from the perspective of the Bible as we have read it. It was only the men. And give us your perspective, uh, give us your analogy of the men watching the cement. Um, so the analogy is that the first, uh, the cement was not dry. So men were told to watch over it. 
The second group came in and they never asked the men who were there before asked why they were standing watching the block of cement. And the third group came in and still continued not asking and con still continue standing behind these men. And so for us, this speaks what the Maasai have been doing towards uh, FGM. It's a culture and tradition that they have followed without really asking why do we do what we do. And when I explained it through that way is when they really understood and they were like, oh, we didn't see it this way because we never asked as to why the people before us, they, why they did it. And so when we came in and when we got born, we could just continue with the same cycle and we keep continuing with it because nobody told us better or asked mm. why the reason as to why to do it here. Yeah. Now you also took food, you helped feed them. There's a terrible drought going on. And even in starting a meeting, you got a very late start to the meeting. Tell us why is that? The late start to the meeting is because the women had to first do their chores. They had to get the water for the cattle and the goods. And then they had to get water for, for their homesteads and all that, get firewood. So that when they come for the meeting, they are able to extend their hours and not rush back home. So in a way, at before the first day we thought we will not get anyone but when we started at around 12 the women kept streaming in and we had a full church by the time we finished we had around 150 women in a small church where we just squeezed in and just loved each other and got the training and what we were and talked about what we had for them and as you uh, had the reconciliation and you had worship it was powerful <laughs> talk about that very quickly uh, it was powerful because asking, sometimes we say we are sorry, but the action sometimes is not followed through. But these women actually stood each other, asking each other to forgive each other and saying sorry. And when you, some, when you hear someone truly saying sorry and they're saying it to your face, it carries a different meaning. There is a deeper impact to it. Did you have any cutters there? One. And did she repent? She was one and she was on the floor. She couldn't be able to hold it. She just stayed on the floor and said, just forgive me, just forgive me. She kept saying, forgive me. And she just said, after that, she just made a prayer in front of the whole church and said, she will not be able, she will not do it again. Now, after all of that, you went to the high schools, you handed out uh, dignity kits to the young ladies. And you work with the boys, educating the young boys, and tell us the box story. Uh, we talked to the boys on how their identity in God, discipleship, their values, and how to respect and treat women. And after we had done all that and prayed for them, we were about to give them the box. Then that's when Pastor John went like, uh, let me ask, does anybody know what's in the box? And the boy said, it's a Bible since you've been teaching us about Christ and the things of God. So it has to be a Bible. We asked them to guess again and again and again. And finally, when the ball, when the ball was lifted from the box, they were so excited. I've never really seen so much excitement <laughs> in one room. And the boys were happy because they recognize that we can see them, we can hear them. Even as we hand out the sanitary towels to the girls, we also show them that they matter and they belong even in the community at large and they are important. Okay, Nemo, this is February, almost March, soon to be March. Uh, what's your calendar hold for the rest of the year? April, okay. youth? April, youth. May? Women. June? Uh, and FGM. July? July we'll have, at the end of July, we have the annual women's conference with, with Debbie. Debbie and, her, Debbie and her team. Yeah. Uh -huh. August, yes. back to the youth? Back to the youth. September? The women. Uh, October? Uh, end of GM. November? Uh, women. And then December youth? Youth. Yeah. Average cost for each one of these times out is approximately three thousand U.S. dollars. Is that 3, correct? Three thousand. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, Nima, thank you for your time. Thank you for all that you do in serving the Maasai. That obviously, right now, is your main ministry. And uh, may God, you celebrated three years as a ministry. Congratulations. Yeah.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did you ever dream you'd be doing this? No, because you kind of pushed me to the deep end and left me. <laughs> blame Bob. Okay, blame Bob. I hear this all the time. But, <laughs> but Bob did good. Bob did well. <laughs>